I think there's a lot of unanswered questions about proteases and where I thought I would start from my presentation point of view is just looking at some of the fundaments of protein digestion because there's, there's areas of obscurity in, in the science of protein digestion as well. So I'm going to start my presentation looking at things like um, endogenous protein secretion, so pepsin, mucin, trypsin, the proteins that are responsible for, for the digestion of protein in the intestine. Uh, so we'll talk through a little bit about that, just setting the scene, looking at the amino acid profile of those proteins, um, how they're in, introduced into the intestine, how they're recovered from the intestine, and then overlay on top of that a little bit about the uh, PROACT um, and how that might fit in with the, the endogenous protein flow into the intestine and the recovery of endogenous proteins. So that's, that's the sort of foundational part of my presentation. Um, and then I'm going to lead in from that into uh, some work that we've been doing recently on the, with a uh, meta-analysis of pro, uh, PROACT responses. So we have a very large database within DSM of, of PROACT work, um, mostly in poultry, um, but we do have swine work as well. It's a very large database of almost 2,000 data points that we have accumulated. Um, it gives us a lot of insights into when PROACT is particularly effective. Um, so really looking at strategies to optimise diet design, to look at the pattern of amino acid responses to, to the product, just to get more insight into terms of where can we go next, where are the knowledge gaps, and what, sh you know, what should we be focusing on from a research point of view. I think it's tempting with enzymes in general to think have, to have a silo mentality. So with phytase we think phosphorus, with protease we think protein, with carbohydrates or amylase we might think starch. And that's logical and it's always a good basis for starting a research platform. As we, the more I work with PROACT, um, the more I realise that there's other things going on than only protein. So yes, proteases will improve protein digestion. There's, as I mentioned before, there's interactions with the endogenous proteins and the dietary incoming protein in the diet. But there's other things. The diet is not in ice, is, is not presented it to the animal as, a, as silos of nutrients. There's, there's a matrix of nutrients. And I think in the future we're going to begin to, to think more widely about proteases, as we do now with phytase. Uh, looking at the extra proteinaceous effects of protein of proteases, um, you know, effects on on fat digestion, effects on the gut health, on on uh, litter quality, on on performance in general, on on um, changing maintenance requirements of the animal. So I think the next five years for proteases are going to be very intriguing because it takes us away from the foundational platform which is amino acid digestion, feed cost reduction which is absolutely central and important but it's going to lead us into new areas that, that just will totally change the value equation. I think that the, the whole area of endogenous protein flow is very important. Um, the, you know, when we consider what proteins are being introduced into the intestine and how completely are they recovered, that's, that's a really important question. We need to get better um, methodologies for understanding endogenous protein flow. So I think gene expression is going to be part of the, the technology tools that, we, that we'll need to use. Um, and there are other, there are various methods um, available to us to understand endogenous protein flow as well. Um, I think gut, the area of gut health um, is important. And again, defining gut health, what do we actually mean when we say good gut health? You know, it's micro, microbiology, it's immunology, it's, it's physiology of the intestine. Um, the, there are effects of proteases in that area and I think we need to get, get a better benchmark understanding of, of what we actually mean. Um, it's defining the box. Before you can think outside the box, you have to actually define what the box is in the first place. And I think from a research point of view, we've got some box boundary setting to do first before we can really explore the effects of protease beyond that.
Um, I, 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 th I would say so, yes. I mean, you, if you had asked that question of Fites in, you know, 1991, 92, I think most people would have said absolutely not. You know, at that time, Fites, is what we, we didn't fully understand, you know, how to optimise their use. They were expensive. New technologies often are moderately expensive initially in the introductory, f you know, stages. And, you know, here we are 20, 25 years later and almost every broiler diet is, is now treated with phytase. I don't see any reason why protease won't follow a similar life flow, um, uh, you know, in, in, in the use of the product. It's rapidly accelerating at the moment and, and you know, penetration is growing om in almost every region in the world. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before the work that we're doing now becomes much more applicable in, you know, with the end users so that we can better inform customers how to optimise the use of the product. And I think as the value equation changes, as, as customers are, are, are we, as we are able to help customers consistently see the value of the product, um, then, you know, the, the market will take off. And I'm confident that, you know, in 10, 15 years, if we have the same conversation again, that uh, proteases will be an incumbent in most broiler diets, certainly, and other species, you know, as we can see with other enzyme classes, will follow probably behind broilers uh, as as the the pioneer. Mm -hmm.